Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. A few days ago I did a video, just a quick show off of how to use a FX emulator with games and Steam on Post Market OS on my phone, and today I want to do more of a tutorial on how to set it up. So I'm using my tablet, which is a Xiaomi Pad 5 Pro. It has the Snapdragon 870 with the Qualcomm Adreno 650 GPU. I'm running Post Market OS Edge, uh, which is the latest development version of Post Market OS. Uh, that's a Linux distribution for uh, ARM tablets and phones. So what I'm going to try to do is install FEX Emulator, which is an open source x86 and x86-64 emulator for ARM64 hosts. So this tablet with its Qualcomm processor uses an ARM64 processor, but Steam and most PC games are compiled for x86 64-bit uh, processors, which are what you'd have on a PC, desktop, or laptop. So this FEX emulator will basically emulate x86 to run it on the ARM64. Um, so to do this, we're, we can't install it on Post Market OS natively. So the FEX instructions are for Ubuntu uh, 2004, 2104. Uh, and actually, it works on 2404, which is the latest LTS. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, here's the command to install FEX. But before we can do that, we need to set up an Ubuntu container. Uh, so I went ahead and wrote up a guide over on the Post Market OS wiki on how to do this. And what we're going to do is use a program called DistroBox, which lets you create containers that run other distributions inside of your host distribution. So while the tablet's running Post Market OS, we can set up an Ubuntu container, and then we can install FEX inside of that container. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste and I've already installed it so um, it's not if you haven't already installed it it will install um, distrobox is based on podman which is a container management software um, and it will pull down containers of whatever distribution you want and then set them up for you so I went ahead and came up with a list of things to remove before you go ahead and install this. This is really only necessary if you've already set it up and are trying to reinstall it from scratch and uh, like start over. So I've already cleaned my previous work on here off so that the tablet's basically at a blank slate. There's no Steam, no FEX, no DistroBox container uh, installed right now. And then what we're going to do is start by running this command. So this is distrobox create dash dash image, and I can make this a little bit bigger, uh, maybe to help you see it. So distrobox create dash dash image Ubuntu colon 24.04. So this tells it what uh, image you want to start with. So we're choosing the Ubuntu 2404 uh, image. This will pull from like Docker Hub, I think. Then we're going to tell it we want to use a root container, which will have root permissions. We're going to set up the container to have its own init system, so dash dash init. And then we're going to do dash dash additional packages Ubuntu desktop. This basically will pull down the entire Ubuntu desktop um, package set, which is what you'd have in a default Ubuntu install on an actual PC. And this is probably not necessary, but I want to do that just so that it has any dependencies that games and Steam might require already installed. Uh, but it will add to the size of the container and to the time it takes to install it. So let's go ahead and run this command. So it's going to create the distro box, and then it will tell us to run this command to enter. And if we go back to my guide over on the wiki, uh, I have that command here as well. So we will go ahead and run that. 
So this is distrobox enter dash dash root ubuntu dash 24 dash 04. So this name automatically gets created uh, from based on the image name, but it replaces the colon and the dot with dashes. So the name is ubuntu dash 24 dash 04. Um, we can go ahead and run that and it'll say starting container and now it's installing basic packages. This part is going to take a while because it's downloading all of the packages from the internet uh, and installing them in the container. So at this point, we're just going to pause the video and come back when it is ready. Okay, so it has errored out and I think when I've done it before, it's had this error. And so the fix is just to run it again, um, do the same command. And when we do that, it's gonna do first time password or first time user password setup. And this is because it's created a user account inside of the DistroBox container. And that user account is supposed to mirror our user account on the actual system. But because it's in a container and it's in a separate system, it has its own password. And Ubuntu is kind of particular about passwords. So uh, let's try like password one, two, three, four. Okay, it took that. Uh, I know there are some restrictions. It has to be a certain length and it has to be a certain um, complexity, I think, on Ubuntu, but there's a trick to work around that. So if you use a numeric password on your PostMarket OS device, because Fosh and maybe some of the other mobile UIs use a pin code to unlock the device, and you want your container password to be the same like four digit numeric password as your system password. And right now I say, I changed my password to one, two, three, four, just for testing. Um, we can change the uh, container password to be the same by doing sudo dash s. And then we have to type in our long password that we just created. So password one, two, three, four. And we can do, um, so now we're root inside of the container. And so we can do pass word, so P-A-S-S-W-D user. And it will ask us for a new password. So we can do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it'll complain about a bad password, but it'll take it anyway. And so if we go back to our user and we run a command, well, I guess it's still remembered uh, the password from the previous time we typed it in. But now the password of the user is 1234, which uh, lines up with my password on the host right now. Um, so I didn't really need to do a uh, pseudo apt update. I just did that to test the password. So we can go back to the wiki page here. And now we're ready to uh, install fax because we have an Ubuntu container. So we're gonna start by running this command, sudo systemctl unmask systemd bin fmt. So bin format or bin fmt is a system that fex and other user space emulators use to basically tell Linux to use the emulator to handle different binary types. So if you just tried to run an x86 Linux binary, um, normally, Linux on ARM would say, hey, this is not a valid ARM binary. This is x86. I can't run that. But if you have registered a bin format handler for it, then the kernel will say, oh, there's a bin format to handle this, and it will call whatever program is associated with it, in this case, the fax emulator. And then the emulator will take over emulating that binary to run it on ARM. So in order to install uh, FEX properly, we have to unmask this service because otherwise it will give an error when we try to install the package. So we'll just run that sudo systemctl unmask systemd-binfmt and it says removed, so that's good. So now we can go ahead and run the install command from the FEXMU GitHub readme. So 
I didn't link it here because uh, copy pasting URLs from the internet and pasting them into your terminal uh, can be a security risk. So I would prefer you get the command from the upstream uh, just in case they change the URL. So we'll copy the command. This is from the FEX quick start guide on their official GitHub page. We will copy this command and we will paste it in here. And so what this is doing, curl is basically downloading this install fax.py and saving it to slash temp slash install fax.py. Then it's calling that script with Python three and which runs the script. And then we're going to remove the script at the end. So that command looks legitimate. We will run it. So it says it will ask you for your password, but if you had already used sudo, then it won't need to. Uh, that would be the password inside of the container if you do have to enter it. And now we just let it download uh, the dependencies and install fex. So what this does is it adds a PPA repository, which is like an unofficial Ubuntu repository for uh, fex and installs the fex mu packages for uh, ARM on Ubuntu. So it automatically detects what version of ARM processor your device has, in this case 8.2. Uh, and then it will ask rootfs not found running fex rootfs fetcher to get rootfs. So what fex needs is a root file system of the x86 64-bit version of the distro that you download. So like the container I'm running is ARM Ubuntu, but FEX also needs x86 Ubuntu, which would be the Ubuntu that you'd have on a PC. Uh, and so they have this program that will just download that for you, which is why we're using Ubuntu in the first place, because they provide a download for Ubuntu. So when it asks, do you want to try and download one? Response will be yes. So hit Y and enter. Found exact match for distro Ubuntu 2404 squash FS. Do you want to select this image? Yes. Selected root FS uh, gives you the URL where it's going to download from. We'll say yes. And then it will go ahead and download this image uh, from the internet uh, from that site. So we'll just go ahead and let it download. The percentage is over here in the corner. Uh, it's going pretty fast about 23 to 30 megabytes per second uh, maybe slowing down a little bit but once that downloads uh, all of this is also documented on this wiki page it says to go through and say yes to the prompts at the end it will ask if we need to extract the image or use it squashed uh, inside of DistroBox, the using it squash doesn't seem to work, so we will need to extract it when it asks. So here we go, it's downloaded 100%. Do you wish to extract the squashfs file or use it as is? Uh, we want to select one, which is extract, so we'll say one, enter, and now it's extracting. And do you wish to set this rootfs as the default? Yes, we do. And now it has tested. So it says trying basic program run and it prints out this um, string. So if we do, this is what, what it's doing is uname dash A. And if we do this normally, it's going to say that we're using um, ARCH64, which is ARM, 64 arm 64 and ARC 64 essentially mean the same thing uh, but in the print that fex does which can be run by doing fex interpreter slash user slash bin slash uname dash a so if you run the command with fex interpreter it's running the 60 or the amd 64 or x86 64 version uh, and if we run that it says the same thing but it replaces uh, the version from PostMarket OS with FEX 2410, which is the version of FEX we're using. And then it changes, it says that it's an x86-64 system rather than an ARCH64 or ARM64 system. So this is basically running uname inside of the emulator 
which is simulating that x86 environment. So now we have FEX installed, which is good because we can now run x86 programs inside of ARM. So now we can set up Steam. Um, so I basically just did this part of the guide where I ran this and it prints out that it's running x86-64. Uh, so now we're going to install Steam, and for that we're just going to follow the guide on the FEX emulator wiki, which I already have open. Let's zoom in on that. And we're going to, so we're using Ubuntu, so we'll just follow this. And it just says download the official Debian package, which we can get directly from this link. And then do sudo apt install dot slash steam dot deb, and then run with FEX bash steam. So let's go ahead and copy this link and go over here and we'll just do wget, which downloads a file from a URL. We'll paste the URL and that has saved steam.deb to our home directory. Uh, and now what we can do is sudo apt install dot slash steam.deb which is what it said to do here, sudo apt install dot slash steam dot deb. And we'll run that. Now we have to enter our password, which is the password from inside of the container. And it is installing. So it has installed steam. And now all we have to do is this last bit here, fex bash steam. So FX bash is, so Steam, the Steam command that you would run on a desktop Linux PC is actually a script rather than an actual executable. Uh, and it calls into multiple x86 executables. So to run that on FEX, we call it with FEX bash, which is a bash uh, shell for running scripts, but it will run executables in the emulator. So that's what that does. Anyways, hit enter, and now it's going to go ahead and set up Steam. This process can take a little while. And it has some errors. We can ignore most of the errors that it prints out. And now it's going to download the Steam runtime environment and install it. And the Steam runtime environment installs to your home directory. So it will be in like dot local share steam or and uh, dot steam, I believe. So it's actually installing it outside of the container because DistroBox maps your actual home directory into the container. So anything in your home directory in the container is in your actual home directory. So I had paused the video and it's still going. Uh, eventually it comes up with a Steam looking uh, dialog box and it downloads more Steam parts. And so this is going to finish up pretty soon and then it should extract and then hopefully we boot into Steam. Okay, so it's extracting the package. And when this is done, hopefully it boots into Steam. Okay, now it's restarting Steam after uh, installing the update. And it goes through the startup sequence again. It's going to unpack the Steam runtime. I think it only has to do this once. Reconfiguring Steam runtime environment. Yeah, the fir first time setup takes a little while.
Okay. Hopefully now it actually starts steam. Oh, more unpacking. Okay, so this error is one that I've gotten several times, and it seems like sometimes it gets stuck in a loop where it just continuously fails, and then sometimes it works fine. A lot of times when I've installed the container for the first time, I get this error, and then if I try to restart Steam and just hit OK, it comes up the second time, but it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it just completely just gets stuck in a fail loop. And there is, there's a few tricks that I've tried to uh, come get it out of that loop, but it seems random. And I did notice there is an open uh, GitHub issue for the Steam Web Helper crash. But hopefully the second time around it'll just work. And then we can log into Steam. It might work. I know there are some things it shows whenever it's going to work related to like resizing the window. If you see those messages, it usually means it's going to work. It doesn't look like Steam Web Helper is just restarting on a loop, so I think this might be a good run, but it does take a little while to start up, especially the first time. Um, yep, okay, there it goes. Steam. So I'm going to go ahead and log in uh, off camera, and then we will come back at the Steam homepage and check it out. Okay, I went through the login process, and it looks like it crashed we have a seg fault that's weird uh, i don't think i've seen that one before let's try running it again Okay, this is the message that I was talking about. Desktop state change, desktop, and then it shows the position of the window. Usually if you see this message uh, print out, then it means that Steam is working and is going to start up and Steam Web Helper has not crashed. But it does take a little while after you see this message before Steam actually comes up. And I think it's especially bad the first time around. It seems like it's faster on subsequent runs. Okay, so we have now gotten into the Steam user interface. I'm going to toggle docked on and off, which in Fosh causes it to reset the window. And then it's loading into the Steam store homepage right now. Um, the Steam UI can be a little slow, but we can see now we can scroll through and everything's starting to populate. So the uh, Steam homepage is working. Uh, here's like the little Steam Deck video playing there. It looks like it's running pretty smoothly. Uh, scrolling feels pretty smooth. But now we can go to library. 
And this is where we can actually start to try and play some games. So I want to start with Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. I like using this one as a demo because it has a video benchmark built in and it's a native uh, Linux game, so it doesn't need Proton or anything like that. So let's go ahead and install this, uh, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. I don't know why the name of the drive is always uh, slash etc slash hostname. Um, it's done that on every, every single installation I've tried. Uh, it's probably a weird distro box thing, uh, but we'll go ahead and install Lost Coast. Um, the other thing that we should do is let's try another game that has a benchmark, and that would be the Tomb Raider 2013. It has a video benchmark as well that we can run, and this one I usually prefer to run the Windows version in Proton, even on PC, than the native Linux version. The native Linux version basically never really got updated and doesn't work very well with modern Linux, but the Proton Windows version running in Proton works great. Um, so that's what I want to do with this, but we'll go ahead and let it download and then we'll switch it over to Proton because we have to enable compatibility mode in uh, Steam or Steam Play. And sometimes it doesn't want to download properly, so we can just uh, try retry and uh, see if this error goes away. Yeah, it goes away. So we'll let these download, and uh, I don't like the displaying in uh, megabits per second. I prefer it in megabytes per second. So we can go ahead and open the download settings here and just change that. I like it displayed in megabytes per second. So we'll let that download. And I don't know whether this is downloading over Ethernet or Wi-Fi right now. I have a USB dock with Ethernet plugged in, which I have uh, to run the mouse. But I also have Wi-Fi connected. So I don't know what it's actually using right now to download. I do see a lot of blinking going on on the switch over there that it's plugged into. Uh, so we'll let this download, and then we'll let uh, Tomb Raider download, and then I will come back. Okay, the downloads are done. We have Lost Coast and Tomb Raider downloaded. Before we play, I want to go ahead and turn on compatibility mode. So we just go to compatibility and enable Steam Play for all other titles. And it says restart required, so we're going to restart. Uh, this will restart Steam. Hopefully we don't get that Steam Web Helper crash. So I, yeah, it looked like it's seg faulted. I'm just going to stop the video and then come back whenever Steam restarts. Okay, Steam is back up. I have restarted it after enabling compatibility mode. Uh, and I've filtered by installed locally, so these are the only two games we have installed. So the first thing is we're going to try and play Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. And I will go ahead and turn the volume up on the tablet. So I can hear some sound. And the next thing is, whenever I ran this before, and it might only be in Fosh, uh, I had issues where it would complain that Wayland wasn't available. So I actually um, used a launch option to fix that, which I have documented over on the wiki here on my Steam Post Market OS wiki page. So I have um, some issues and workarounds in this section here, but then also notes that I took on the various games that I've tested. And so for all of the Half-Life games, I think all of the Source Engine games and even some other native Linux games, at least on Fosh, I needed this SDL video driver equals X11 uh, variable set. So what we can do is we'll set this variable uh, in launch options. 
But then we also have to do um, percent command, uh, no space, percent. So what this means is we're going to set this uh, environment variable, and then we're going to um, basically prefix the game command with this, which will set the environment for the game. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that, and then we can click play, and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast should run. Well, it's running, but there's no sound. I know I had sound working before. Okay, the game is up, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the default options it's picked for us. So we do have uh, sound is enabled, so I don't know why we're not hearing anything. But on video, it's picked 1280 by 800. So this tablet is actually 2560 by 1600, but it's at 200% scaling. So this is half of uh, 2560 by 1600. Um, due to that scale factor, and I think that's actually a good thing. Um, running it at full resolution is going to be tough on this integrated GPU, uh, but 1280 by 800 should be perfectly fine. Uh, advanced, it's gone ahead and picked high, very high, high. Water detail, simple reflection, shadow detail, high, color correction enabled. Anti-aliasing is at 4x MSAA. Uh, filtering is anisotropic 16x, V-Sync is on, motion blur enabled, multi-core rendering enabled, high dynamic range is full if available. We're just going to leave it at the defaults. Uh, okay. And one thing to note is this screen is actually a 120 hertz screen. So Linux is seeing this as a 120 hertz display. Um, let's make sure, yeah, there's only one audio device detected. Uh, so I don't know why the sound's not working, but let's go ahead and run the video stress test uh, to demo that this is working. Uh, loading sometimes takes a little while, because I think it's both compiling the OpenGL shaders, loading the data, and compiling the uh, x86 to ARM. Okay, we'll go ahead and leave commentary off and hit OK, and that will run our benchmark. So there, it is running very smoothly. Um, a little bit of uh, stutters here and there. I know whenever it gets to this rock right here and when the camera flies right over it, in the past I've seen it really stop to do some processing. Eh, it didn't do it this time. Yeah, we're not getting any sound. I'm, I'm not sure why. But the benchmark is running and this is running on that Adreno 650 GPU, which seems to be handling it fine. Uh, this demo does run under OpenGL. When we run the Tomb Raider 2013 benchmark on the Proton version, it will be running under DXVK, which uses Vulkan. Uh, some stutters there while we rounded that corner.
I see some stuttering going on on the camera preview, and it's more stuttering on the camera preview than what I'm seeing on the actual screen. I think there might be like a frame rate incompatibility. I know the camera is running at 30 frames per second. I don't know exactly what. Well, we'll see in a few seconds what the uh, average frame rate of the benchmark was. Uh, it was actually 59.15, so almost exactly 60, or one less than 60. Uh, that's pretty good. I think that's higher than the previous runs I've gotten on FEX on this tablet. And maybe there is something limiting it to 60 rather than 120. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at that because the mouse cursor is, is very smooth. It's running at 120. Um, but anyways, I would consider that a successful benchmark other than the sound. So now let's run uh, Tomb Raider. So I'm going to run this one in compatibility mode. I want to use the Windows version. So we're going to pick Proton Experimental. Uh, and that's going to cause it to, uh, I need to click Update. Maybe. Let's see what the downloads are saying. Uh, no internet connection, that's a lie. Okay, I'll pause the video and come back whenever all this is updated. Okay, so Tomb Raider is updated. Let's go ahead and run it and run the benchmark and see what happens. So, Let's go to Tomb Raider, and we'll just go ahead and click play. Uh, so this is a Vulkan application. Well, it runs in DXVK, which uh, is the Vulkan to, uh, well, DirectX to Vulkan wrapper. And like on PC, Steam is going to pre-process the Vulkan shaders. Uh, so that's going on right now. So. Let's go ahead and let that run to get the best benchmark we can by letting it pre-process all the shaders. It's going reasonably fast. Okay, and now I know this game has a launcher that pops up before the actual game. So hopefully we'll see that launcher soon. I think the first time you run a Proton game, though, it takes a little longer because it has to set up the wine prefix. Let's look at the... Uh, this error comes up all the time, this game overlay renderer. Um, I don't think the game overlay works. We do have F-Sync up and running, which is from Wine uh, adding process. So yeah, I think it's it's working. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and look at the options. Uh, so our display is uh, Turnip Adreno 650. That is Turnip is the open source Vulkan driver for Qualcomm Adreno GPUs. Uh, so it's showing that as our GPU. Resolution is 1280 by 800. V-Sync is double buffer. Um, can we pick 120 hertz? We can. Let's do that. Quality, let's, uh, that's not popping up. Fosh is a little weird about pop-ups sometimes. Let's go ahead and put it at low quality um, just to give it the best chance of running well. Uh, we will leave it in full screen, exclusive full screen. 1280 by 800, 120 hertz, low, um, and leave all that. And we'll just leave all this as is. Um, but you can see the settings that I'm using. I'm gonna hit OK. And then let's go ahead and hit play. And hopefully we get sound on this one. We'll see.
Oh, still no sound. I don't know what's going on with the sound. I know it's worked before. It could just be something with DistroBox or with my uh, Pulse Audio or PipeWire session. Um, so I wouldn't, I'm not too worried about the sound not working. I think that would be easy to fix. But the menu screen looks like it's running pretty smoothly. Um, the waves in the background, that's all 3D rendered. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the benchmark. I like using this benchmark on all sorts of Linux devices. I've been running this benchmark on the NVK driver on my laptop to see how well uh, that driver is progressing. It's a good uh, Linux benchmark. But this is on the lowest settings, 1280 by 800. There is some noticeable stuttering. Um, yeah, there were some really bad hiccups there. I might rerun this. I might run it twice. Because the first time it's got to do some compilation stuff, and I think it probably caches the results of that compilation and background processing. And so the second round hopefully should be better because I, I know it ran better than this when I've tested it before. Because it runs smoothly and then there are just a bunch of really big hang ups. With all that stuttering, I'm not expecting the results to be very good this run. We'll, we'll give it a second run. Oh, minimum is 0 0.4. Maximum is 75, though. That's pretty solid. And average is 38.9. But it is still stuttering here and there. And it's actually stuttering the mouse cursor, too. Let's go ahead and run that again. Yeah, it's not stuttering anywhere near as bad at this time. There's definitely still some mild stuttering, but nothing crazy. Oh, and I think it just crashed. Uh, no? I'm not sure what happened. It's showing that there's still a window for it. But then the Steam UI... Okay. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do before setting all this up is I did not create a swap file. When I did my previous testing, I had a four gigabyte swap file enabled. I think we just hit out of memory and locked up. Uh, sometimes I had this happen if I didn't have a swap file. Uh, it would just run into memory pressure and crash. I'm guessing that's what just happened. Well, I'm going to pause the video. I will set up a four gigabyte swap file and we'll give Tomb Raider one last try. And I think that will be it for this video. 
Okay, we're back. I had to power cycle and re-log in and everything uh, because it just completely was unusable, unusably slow. So let's go ahead and do htop just, and we're doing this on the host side. Um, and this is showing that we're using about 1.28 gigs out of 7.39, but this is with nothing running. We haven't started Steam or anything yet. And uh, there's a 1.85 gig swap, but that's ZRAM, so that's actually just compressed RAM. Let's go ahead and start by... stopping that ZRAM uh, swap. So that will remove the ZRAM swap, and now we want to make a, an actual swap file. So we're going to do sudo ddif equals dev zero of equals slash swap file bs equals one mb size, I think it's, is it sz or size? I don't remember. I guess sz equals 4096. That should be a four gigabyte swap file. Uh, no, it is size. Okay. I oh, know it's uh, count. Never mind. That's uh, count, not uh, SZ or size. Okay, so that created a four gigabyte swap file. Now I have to do sudo mk swap slash swap file. Um, okay. It says uh, there's an issue with the permissions. Fix with chmod 0600 swap file. We'll do sudo and that command. And now we can do sudo swap on slash swap file. And sudo swap on says 3.8. If we go back to htop, now it shows we have a 3.81 gig swap file and we're not using any ZRAM. So I think ZRAM, uh, when it starts to fill up, causes it to slow down as it's doing compressing. So now we just have like a regular swap file. Hopefully this should let us run um, Tomb Raider, the benchmark. So we'll exit that tab. We'll go back to this tab, which I've already logged into our distro box. Uh, you can run this distro box, enter dash dash root Ubuntu dash 24 dash 04 um, after you've set it up to get back into the container. Um, and it just redoes all of the like init setup stuff. It doesn't have to redownload anything, but it has to rerun the like startup sequence. And now once we're in the container, which you can see by this little like box and the fact that it says user at Ubuntu 2404, uh, we can run fex bash steam again. And hopefully this will get us into steam. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until steam's up and we're ready to run Tomb Raider. Okay, uh, it's back up, and one thing I noticed is after rebooting, sound is now working. Oh, sound's working fine. So that's cool. I think all it needed was a reboot uh, of the entire system, and that's working. So let's go ahead and run the benchmark one last time and see what happens with that swap file enabled. This is running way better than it was, I think. I'm not seeing much stuttering at all on the screen. I'm seeing a little on the camera preview, but I'm not seeing stuttering on the tablet. It looks smooth.
maybe a very little, very small amount. Okay, this is a really good result. Minimum 43.1, maximum 84.1, and average is 70.4, so above 60. And on this 120 hertz screen, that actually uh, matters. So I think that basically concludes this video. I've demonstrated two games, one native, one Windows, running on FEX emulator in Steam on an Ubuntu 24 uh, container on DistroBox on Postmarket OS. That's quite the stack to run games on a tablet, but it seems to work. And why not? Let's just hop into game and run around to close out this video. If there are any other games you'd like to see running on this tablet or on this setup, uh, I will be going through my library and testing more of them. Um, so here we are in game. Actually, wow, that's running really good. We could probably bump the settings up, but uh, that's a topic for another video. I know I played through uh, this game pretty much the whole game on my Steam Deck, and that was also at like 1280 by 800 or 1280 by 720, something like that. Uh, 800. Uh, that's what the Steam Deck resolution is. And uh, I think I also had it on like low settings and it ran at 60 frames per second. So like this is pretty impressive to see running this well on an ARM tablet. Yeah, that's, uh, I've already completed the game, so there's really nothing much to do other than running around, but it's nice to see this game run. You can tell there's some stuttering going on as it compiles, whether it's shaders or emulation, I'm not sure, but once it's done stuttering, then it, then it runs smoothly. <coughs> so anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed this setup video. If you have a post market OS device and you want to test, uh, please let me know about your results. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.